So today we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, chapter 12, creation of the Kumara and others, text number 4. Un tā šodien mēs lasām Šīmet Bhagavatam trešās nodaļas 12. pant 12. nodaļu Kumāra un citu radīšana ceturtais pants. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sanakam Sanakam Cha Cha Sanandam Sanandam Cha Cha Sanatanam Sanatam Ata Ata Atmabhu Atmabhu Sanat Kumaram Sanat Kumaram Cha Munin, Munin, Niskriyan, Niskriyan, Urdhareitasa, Urdhareitasa, Sanakamsha, Sanandamsha, Sanakamsha, Sanandamsha, Sanatanam, Mathatma Bhu, Sanatan Atma, Sanat Kumaram, Cha Munin, Sanat Kumaram, Cha Munin. Nishkriyan Urdhareta Sa Nishkriyan Urdhareta Sa Sanakam Cha Sanandam Cha Sanakam Cha Sanandam Cha Sanatanam Mathatma Bhu Sanat Kumaram Cha Munin Nishkriyan Urdhareta Sa Sanakam, Sanaka, Cha, also, Ari, Sanandam, Sananda, Cha, and, Un, Sanatanam, Sanatana, Atta, thereafter, Talak, Atmabu, Brahma, who is self-born. Brahma, kurš ir pašpiedzimis. Sanat Kumaram. Sanat Kumara. Cha. Also. Ari. Munin. The great sages. Dijane Gudriam. Nishkriyam. Free from all fruitive action. Brīvi no visām auglīgām darbībām. Urdhvadreitasa Those who summon flows upwards. Tie, kuru sēkla plūst augšup. Translation in purport by Śrīla Prabhupāda. In the beginning, Brahmā created four great sages named Sanaka, Sananda, Sanatana and Sanatkumāda. All of them were unwilling to adopt materialistic activities because they were highly elevated due to their summons flowing upwards. Purport. Although Brahma created the principle of nescience as a matter of necessity, for those living entities who were destined to ignorance by the will of the Lord, he was not satisfied in performing such a thankless task. He therefore created four principles of knowledge, Sankhya, or empirical philosophy, for the analytical study of material conditions, Yoga, or mysticism, for liberation of the pure soul from material bondage, Vairagya, the acceptance of complete detachment from material enjoyment in life in order to elevate one to the highest spiritual understanding, and Tapas, or the various kinds of voluntary austerities performed for spiritual perfection. <clears throat> Brahma created the four great sages, Sanaka, Sananda, Sanatana, and Sanat, to entrust them with the four principles of spiritual advancement. And they inaugurated their own spiritual party, or Sampradaya, known as the Kumara Sampradaya, 
or later on as the Nimbarka Sampradaya for the advancement of bhakti. <clears throat> All of these great sages became great devotees. For without devotional service to the personality of Godhead, one cannot achieve success in any activity of spiritual value. Tulkojums. Sākumā Brahma radīja četrus dižanus gudros, kurus sauca Sanaka, Sananda, Sanātana un Sanat Kumāra. Tie visi nevēlējās veikt materiālistiskas darbības, jo viņi bija ļoti attīstīti tā iemesla dēļ, ka sēkla viņu ķermenī plūdu uz augšu. Skaidrojums. Lai gan Brahma radīja neziņas principus, kā nepieciešamību tām dzīvajām būtniem, kas saskaņā ar kunga gribu bija nolēmtas neziņai, Viņš nebija apmierināts veicot šādu nepateicīgu uzdevumu. Tāpēc viņš radīja četrus zināšanu principus – sānhja vai empīrisku filozofiju materiālo apstākļu analītiskai izpētēji, jogu vai misticismu, lai atbrīvotu tīru dvēseli no materiālajām važām, vai rāgju – pilnīgas atsacīšanās no materiālās baudīšanas pieņemšanu savā dzīvē, lai paceltu sevi uz augstāku garīgu sapratni, un tapas vai dažādus – dažādu veidu laprātīgas askēzes, kas tiek veiktas, lai sasniegtu garīgu pilnību. Brahma radīja četrus dižanus gudros – Sanaka, Sananda, Sanātara un Sanat, lai uzticētu viņiem šos četrus garīgās attīstības principus. Un viņi radīja paši savas garīgās partijas vai sampradājas, pazīstamas kā Kumāra sampradāja vai vēlāk kā Nimbārka sampradāja – bakti progresam. Visi šie dižanie gudrie kļuva par dižaniem baktām, jo bez uzticīgas kalpošanas dievu personībai cilvēks nevar gūt panākumus nevienā darbībā, kam ir kāda garīga vērtība. Vandēham Shri Guru Shri Jatā Vadakamala Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghuna Tanvitam Tam Sajeevam Sadaitam Savadutam Badijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shivisha Kanvitam Sha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Svaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswate Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Pashtatya Deshatarine So Brahma wasn't feeling very good about creating all this nations. Un tā Brahma nejūtās pārāk labi radot šos visus neziņas principus. He wanted to give some way out of this nations. Viņš vēlējās kādu ceļu, pa kuru tikt ārā no šīs neziņas. So he created the four principles of knowledge. Un tā viņš radīja četrus zināšanu principus. Along with the four great sages who were the representatives of these principles of knowledge. Un kopā ar četriem dižaniem gudriem, kas bija šo zināšanu virzienu pārstāvi. It is significant to note by Prabhupada's last sentence in the purport. Un ir svarīgi šeit pievērst uzmanību pēdējam teikumam Prabhupada's skaidrojumā. Even these principles, if there is no bhakti, they cannot liberate one. Pat šie principi, ja līdz ar tiem nav bhakti, nevar atbrīvot cilvēku. Whether you practice sankhya, yoga, vairagya or tapas. Vai neatkarīgi no tā, ko jūs praktizējat, sankhya, yoga, vairagya vai tapas. If the element of bhakti is not present in these fourth atoms. Un, ja šajos četros nav klātesoši bhakti. One will not be successful. Cilvēks nebūs sekmīgs. In other words, the essence is bhakti. 
Citiem vārdiem sakot, būtība ir bhakti. It's also said the Vedantin note in this verse the term urdhvaritasa. Un vēl šeit ir teiks, ka šis termins vaitasa means samana. Urdhvaritasa. And urdhva means upwards. Kas nozīmē, tātad sēkla un uz augšu. What is this idea of semen which goes upwards? Un kas tad tā ir par par ideju par sēklu, kas plūst uz augšu? Actually the present day society thinks the more your semen goes downwards then you are successful. Un mūsdienu sabiedrība vairāk domā, tas attiecās uz vīriešu sēklu, ka jo vairāk tā iet uz leju, jo vairāk jūs sekmīgs. Semen downwards means passing semen. Tātad sēkla uz leju nozīmē šķies sēklu. Semen upwards means by not passing semen of every training it, then it naturally flows upwards and nourishes the brain. Un sēklu uz augšu nozīmē, ka, ja cilvēks ir pareizi sagatavots, tad sēkla tā vietā, lai izietu ārā no ķermeņa, viņi plūs uz augšu un baros mazenes. Therefore, the Vedic culture is based on the principle of brahmachari. Un tāpēc vediskā kultūra ir balstīta uz brahmachari principu. Brahmachari means urdhvadrita, semana rising to the brain. Un brahmachari nozīmē tātad sēkla, kas plūst uz augšu. <coughs> As I have many times explained, in our uh, Vedic culture, we have five kinds of brahmacharis. Kā es esmu daudz kārt to skaidrojis, vediskajā kultūrā ir piecu veidu brahmacari. We have brahmacari, brahmacari. Tas ir pirmais, brahmacari, brahmacari. Brahmacharini, brahmacharis. Tad ir brahmacharini, brahmacari. Grihastha brahmacharis. Grihastha brahmacari. Vanaprastha brahmacharis. Vanaprastha brahmacari. And sanyas brahmacharis. And sanyas brahmacharis. So, especially for the male, this is a very important principle. Un īpaši vīriešiem tas ir ārkārtīgi svarīgs princips. Because if he wastes his semana by passing it indiscriminately for some so-called pleasure. Tāpēc, ka ja vīrietis šķirš savu sēklu bez apdomas dēļ tā sauktās baudas. He decreases his duration of life. Viņš samazina savu dzīves ilgumu. He makes himself subject to untimely death. Viņš padara sevi par to, ko var skart pāragra nāve. He makes himself more susceptible to disease of the body. Viņš padara sevi par vairāk par jūtīgāk pret slimībām. And he makes himself more susceptible to becoming a senile old man, a dumb, stupid old man. Un viņš padara sevi par tādu, kuram ir lielāka varbūtība kļūt par vecu stulbu vīru, tādu, jā, vecu, vecumā zaudēt sprātu. <coughs> Just like they say in English, an old coon. Old coon. Coon, it's a nick, you know, they call an old man an old coon. Vecu cilvēks sauc par veciem stulbeņiem. So um, this, the Vedic culture is very very nice culture. Vedicā kultūra ir ļoti jauka kultūra. Because it teaches one from the very beginning to become brahmachari. Tāpēc ka no paša sākuma tā māca kā cilvēkam kļūt par brahmachari. At the age of 5 the young boy he goes to live in the Gurukul. Piecu gadu vecumā jauns puika viņš dodas lai dzīvot Gurukulā. The ashram of the spiritual master. Kas ir garīgā skolotāja ashrams. He is trained never to see a woman as an object of sex enjoyment. Un viņu apmāca, ka uz sievieti nekad nevajag skatīties kā uz seksa objektu. He addresses every woman as mother. Viņš vērš pie jebkuras sievietes kā pie mātes. And Prabhupāda personally instructed me like this. Every woman addressed as mother. Yes. Un uh, Prabhupāda personiski man deva šādu norādījumu, ka ikvienu sievieti ir jā, pie, pie, jāvēršās pie ikvienu sievietes kā pie mātes. I do not know why in our movement some people are trying to change this principle. Un es nezinu, kāpēc mūsu kustībā daži cilvēki cenšas izmainīt šo principu. The lady should not be called mother. Ka um, sievietes nevajadzētu uzrunāt kā mā, par mātēm. There is a great danger if we change this Vedic principle. Ir liela bīstamība, ja mēs izmainīsim šo vedisko principu. If we don't see the ladies as mother, we will see them as objects of sense pleasure. Jo, ja mēs neredzēsim sievietes kā mātes, tad mēs viņas redzēsim kā baudu objektu. So we should not give up this principle of seeing the ladies as mother. 
Un tāpēc mums nevajag atteikties no šī principa, raudzīties uz sievietēm kā uz mātēm. So the boy he spends 20 years as brahmachari living in the ashram of Guru Maharaj. Un tā puika pavada 20 gadus um, kā brahmachari ashramā. And then at the age of 25 he has a choice. Un tad 25 gadu vecumā viņam ir izvēle. You can remain as a brahmachari. Palikt kā brahmachari. Or if you feel an inclination you can get married. Bet vai arī ja ir noslēdz uz to tad varat aprecēties. But you see, he's been trained as a brahmachari for 20 years, strictly trained as a brahmachari. But that's how you do this God is Rapmatsits, Ka Brahmachari. Therefore, he enters household life in the mood of brahmachari, you see. That is when you say, Gimenez Zivim, Brahmachari no Skanyama. That he only has sex life for procreation. Kavinyam ir sexual asatiyas, ips tikai tapet, lai radit bernus. Shila Prabhupada instructed us this is our principle for our householders in this kan. Um Shila Prabhupada devashad noradi kat noradim kat tam ir jābūt principam mūsu ģimenes dzīvē. To only have sex life for procreation. Ka seksuālās attiecības ir tikai tāpēc lai radītu pēcnācējus. He explained uh, that once in a month the husband if they, the husband and wife want to have child and they've gotten blessings from the spiritual master to have a child viņš skaidroja ka reiz mēnesī ja laulātais pāris vēlas bērnu un ja viņiem ir svētība no garīgā skolotāja then once in a month on the most fertile time after the lady's menstrual cycle tad reiz mēnesī pēc sievietes menstruācijas cikla kas ir visauglīgākais periods after the husband and wife have both chanted 50 rounds of japa. Pēc tam, kad vīrs un sieva abi katrs ir noskaitījis 50 apļus japas. Then they can try to have child. Tad viņi var mēģināt ieņemt bērnu. I remember I've told this story many times but I was I remember when I was a brahmachari in Miami. Es esmu stāstījis šo stāstu daudz reizes. Es atceros, kad es biju brahmachari in Miami. One householder approached me he was very happy he wanted to share a wonderful story with me tāds ģimenes cilvēks viens vērsās pie manis un viņš vēlējās dalīties ar man brīnišķīgā stāstā his wife was standing there also on viņa sieva arī tur bija he said last night my wife and i we wanted we chanted 50 rounds because we wanted to have a child following prabhupada's instructions un teic pagājušā naktī sakojot prabhupada's norādījumiem mēs skaitījām 50 apļus jo gribējām ieņemt bērnu but after we chanted the 50 rounds we were so enlivened by chanting hari krishna Bet pēc 50 apļu noskaitīšanas mēs bijām tik iedvesmoti no Hare Krishna skaitīšanas. We decided, let's wait till next month before we have Mēs no, nolēmām, pagaidīsim līdz nākamajam mēnesim. So what does this mean? Un ko tas nozīmē? It means Hare Krishna is better than sex. Ka Hare Krishna ir labāk nekā sex. So it's not artificial renunciation for us, you see. To... Tā nav mākslīga atsacīšanās mums. To practice brahmachari life, you see. Lai praktizētu brahmachari dzīvi. Because brahmachari is sweeter than sex. Tāpēc, ka brahmachari ir saldāk nekā sex. So this is one of the insider secrets of Krishna consciousness. Un tas ir viens no noslēpumiem, ar ko es, ar ko es dalos kā cilvēks, kas to praktizē. There is somebody going after sex, 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 sex. Cilvēki dzenās tikai pēc seksa un seksa. Every billboard, every magazine, every movie, sex, 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 sex. Žurnāli, plakāti, filmas, tikai par seksu. I remember when I was a kid growing up in America, there was a toothpaste called Ultra Bright Toothpaste. Es atceros, tad, kad es savu kā puika, bija tāda zobu pastara Ultra Mirdzums. And the commercial said, New ultra bright toothpaste gives your mouth sex appeal. <laughs> Un teic, ka jaunā jauna ultra mirzošā zobu pasta padarīs jūsu muti sex appeal. So the whole culture, this western culture is simply geared towards sex, 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 sex. Vis šī rietumu kultūra ir tikai par seksu. Prabhupada said the position of the sex that how nasty it is. The position of the taste. The position of sex that how nasty it is. I didn't. I can't understand. I understand that. I understand every word, but I can't understand the whole sentence. This is Prabhupada's English, poetic English. Okay. The, he said, literally said, the position of the sex that how nasty it is. In other words, sex okay. is very nasty. Prabhupada teica, ka, ka sex stāvoks ir tas, ka tas ir ļoti nejauks. 
Just like when you pass urine, it's a dirty thing. Tas tā pat kā, ka jūs pačurājat, tā ir netīra lieta. You pass stool, it's a dirty thing. Arī vai ka pakakājat, tā ir netīra lieta. Paying the summer is also a dirty thing. Un sēkla, kad noplūst, tas tā arī ir netīra lieta. But for having a child, it becomes blessed, it becomes transcendental. Bet, lai ieņemtu bērnu, tas ir svētīts, tad tā ir tā ir pārpasaulīga lieta. If one tries to have a child according to the Vedic injunctions, and that is, Krishna says, I am that sex. Un, ja kāds vēlas šo seksu pēc vēdiskiem norādījumiem, Krišna saka, es esmu tas seks. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text number 11, the 7-11 verse. Tas ir 7-11 pants. Kamas mi baratar shabā. I am that sex. Es esmu tas sex. Which is according to religious principles. Kas ir saskaņā ar religiskajiem principiem. So that sex is divine. Un šis seks ir dievišķis. And we applaud those householders who follow this principle and produce saintly children. Un mēs aplaudējam tām ģimenēm, kas, kas, kas ieņem šādus svētītus bērnus. One time in our Dallas community there was some discussion um, about who is more successful in, in making devotees. Un Dallas es, um, draudzēju reizi bija diskusija par to, kas ir sekmīgākais um, baktu uh, radīšanā. Gan brahmačāri, gan saņāsī, viņi sludina, lai padarītu cilvēks par baktām. And the are propagating to make devotees. Um, bet uh, ģimenes cilvēki, viņi mm, rada šos mm, baktas. So our, 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 uh, our GBC man, Tamal Krishna Maharaj. Un mūsu GBC pārstāvis, Tamal Krishna Maharaj. He said the householders are winning. <laughs> Un teica, um, ģimenes cilvēki uzvar. By sex life, they're making more devotees than the brahmacharis and the sannasis are by preaching. <laughs> jo ar savu sex dzīvi viņi rada vairāk baktas nekā brahmacharī un sannasī ar savu sludināšanu. So that sex life is glorious sex life, is it? Un tātad šī šāda cil, um, seksuālā dzīve ir cildena. In fact, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, he said, he was a strict brahmachari his whole life. He never passed semana in his whole life, is it? Nice tika brahmachari. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati, uh, viņš bija nice tika brahmachari, viņš nekad savā dzīvē viņam nebū, nebija sēkla noplūdusi. He said, if I could produce Krishna conscious children, I am prepared to have sex life 100 times. Un viņš teic, ja es, ja tā ir nepieciešams radīt um, kriš, bērnus Krišnas apziņā, es esmu gatavs to darīt 100 reizes. So anyway, this principle of urva raitva is a very important principle in Vedic culture. Un tā vai savādāk, bet šis te princips uh, ir ārkārtīgi svarīgs vedisko kultūrā. And because by retaining that samana, one gets very, very good brain for understanding Vedic wisdom. Tāpēc, ka saglabājot sēklu, cilvēks iegūs ļoti, ļoti labas uh, saprātu smadzenes, lai saprastu vedisko gudrību. In the Vedic culture, the brahmacharis, they were called shruti dhar. Un vediskajā kultūrā brahmacharī tika sauc... They were called shruti dhar. Viņi sauca shruti dhar. Because they could, anything they heard one time, they could perfectly retain it. Tāpēc, ka jebko, ko viņi vienreiz dzirdēja, viņi varēja to saglabāt, atcerēties. A brahmachari could hear 18,000 verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam, and he could perfectly retain every single syllable of all 18,000 verses just by one hearing. Brahmachari vienreiz, paties, brahmačāri vienreiz dzirdot Srimad Bhagavatam 18 tūkstoši pantus, spēja atkārtot katru zilbi no tiem. That's a real brahmachari. Tas ir īsts brahmačari. We're Kali Yuga brahmacharis, but we're struggling, what can we do, you know? We're Kali Yuga's brahmachari. We saw, we saw the Shruti Dhar also in Goranga, Lord Chaitanya. Uh, un mēs redzējām Shruti Dhar arī Kungā Chaitanya. Uh, and the, there was one conquering pandit, his name was Keshava Kashmiri. Un bija kāds pandits, neuzvarams, ke, uh, conquering pandit, Keshava Kashmiri. Keshava Kashmiri, pandits bija. He was going all over India and defeating everyone by debate. Un viņš ceļoja pa Indiju un debatēs uzvarēja ikvienu. Just like now they have the Olympics. Tā kā tagad ir olimpiskās spēles. It's a big thing to see who gets the gold medal, you know. <laughs> Tā ir liels notikums redzēt, kurš saņem zelta medaļu. So in those days the sporting was not 
physical, it was intellectual sporting. Tajā laikā nu, sacensība notika nevis fiziskajā līmenī, bet intelektuālajā. And whoever won the debate, they, they didn't get a gold medal, those people became disciples of that person. Un tie, kas, tā, tā, tie, kas uzvarēja, tie, kas zaudēja, tie kļuva par uzvarētāju skolniekiem. So this Keshva Kashmiri, he was a big, big devotee of Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Un šis Keshava Kašmirs, viņš bija liels, viņš, viņš, bija, viņš pielūdza Sarasvati zināšanu dievieti. And he was very, very powerful in debate. No one could defeat him. Un viņš bija ļoti varens diskusijās, neviens nevarēja viņu uzvarēt. At that time, Navadvīp was like the Oxford of India. Un tajā laikā Navadvīpa bija tā kā Indijas Oksforda. It was the seat of higher learning. Un tajā vietā pulcējās visi mācītie cilvēki. So Keshav Kashmiri was coming to defeat the Navadvīp pandits. Un Keshav Kashmir ieradās, lai satriektu Navadvīpas panditus. And they were scared. Un viņi bija nobijušies. So they all found excuses to leave town that weekend. Un tajā nedēļas nogalē viņi atrada dažādas iemesas, lai pamestu pilsētu. And they left one pilsētu. of their young pandits to debate with Keshav Kashmiri. They found? Well, they left one of their young ah. pandits. Un viņi atstāja vienu no saviem jaunākajiem panditiem, lai tas piedalās šajās te diskusijās. A mere boy. Vienkārši puika. His name was Nimai Pandit. Un viņa vārds bija... He was Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> Nimais pandits, un tas bija kungs Chaitanya. So, uh, they were having some discussion on the bank of the sacred river Ganges. Un tātad viņiem bija diskusija Gangas krastos, Svētās upes. And Keshava Kashmiri to show off his great Sanskrit erudition. On Keshava Kashmir lai parādītu cik izlītots viņš ir sanskritā. He spontaneously composed 100 verses of Sanskrit poetry just off just off the top of his head. Just blue you know, spontaneously 100 verses of Sanskrit poetry glorifying Mother Ganga. Un viņš sacerēja simts pantu cildinājumu Gangai turpat uz vietas sanskritā, lai parādītu, cik viņš ir izcils. So, the young Namai Pandit, he heard very nicely. Un ja, šis jaunais Namai Pandits uzmanīgi klausījās. He said, but my dear uh, Panditji, I have dar... noted in the 64th verse a literary discrepancy. Bet viņš teic Pandiji, bet es pamanī, ka 64. pantā tur bija tāds nepilnība literāra. The pandit was amazed. He is able to retain all of these verses I have recited and he has picked up a discrepancy in the 64th verse. <laughs> un tas uh, pandits bija pārsteigts, ka viņš spēj tiešām visu atcerēties un turklāt vēl pamanīt trūkumu 64. pantā. Keshava Kashmir was shocked. Un Keshava Kashmir bija šokā. And he's so Namai Pandit says, yes, you have stated Bhavani Bartu. Jā, viņš teica, jūs teicāt Bhavani Bartu. The husband of the wife of Lord Shiva. Husband of the, uh, Shiva's uh, Sievas uh, vīrs. Which is, a, which is a literary fault called repetition. Kas literāri nozīmē, ka jūs tā bija atkārtošanās. Redundancy, jā, yeah, yeah. redundancy. Because he, why, why say the husband of the wife of Lord Shiva? Why not just say Lord Shiva? You've been, this is redundancy. Kāpēc teikt, uh, um, husband of the wife, husband of the wife, Lord Shiva? You're unnecessarily wordy. You, yeah, no, but, but you, that doesn't make sense. The husband, husband of the wife of, of Lord Shiva. Ah, the husband of the, the wife, wife of Lord Shiva. But he's not husband of the husband. The, the husband of the wife. No, husband of the wife, wife of Lord, Lord Shiva. Husband of the wife of Lord Shiva. Means husband of the husband. <laughs> husband of the wife of Lord Shiva. No. Lord Shiva's wife has a husband. Okay. Tad ir atkārtošanā, atkārtošanās. I will think about it, the grammar. Off, two times off. Off on off. It means... Okay. It's like if you say, it's like myself and my wife, for example. Yeah. If you say, um, if you say the husband, the husband. of Vishnu Priya Madhaji. Yeah, the husband. Of the husband of Sank, the the husband of Vishnu Priya Madhaji. The wait. <laughs> <laughs> the husband of Sankarshan Prabhu's wife. 
Jā, jūs sakāt, jūs, ja, ja jūs... <laughs> Savu nesmēju. Jā, jūs, jā, ok. Ja jūs sakāt, piemēram... Uh, <laughs> husband is not Christian, but his wife. <laughs> Husband, uh, sank, uh, ah, sankaršana prabū, sievas vīrs, jūs sakat, sankaršana prabū, sievas vīrs, jā, tas ir neloģi, tā, ir divas, tā vieta, lai vienkārši pateiktu, uh, sankaršana prabū, ir tas pats, kas pateikt sankaršana prabū, tātad tu, tu šajā gadījumā tur bija pateikt, ka šīva, uh, šīvas sievas vīrs ir tas pats šīva, I got it, jā. <laughs> So it's called redundancy. Tā ir atkārtošanās. You should just say Sankarshan Prabhu. You shouldn't say the, 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 you know, the, the husband of Sankarshan Prabhu's wife. Tātad jums pietiek pateikt tikai vienu, nevis to visu garo. So in this way, Kesha Kasmiri was shocked. How could I make such a mistake? Un Kesha Kasmiris bija šokā. Kā gan es varēju pieļaut tādu kļūdu? This young boy has defeated me. Šis jaunais puika mani sakāva. He couldn't understand. He prayed to Mother Saraswati that night. What, a, what is going on? How could I be defeated? Un viņš uh, lūdzās Saraswati tajā naktī, kā gan mani varēja uzvarēt? And she revealed to him, this is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Un šī viņa, un uh, Saraswati viņam atbildēja, tas paties, tā patiesībā Dieva augstā kā personība. So in this way, uh, Keshava Kashmiri, he become, he joined Lord Chaitanya's movement, you see. Un Keshava Kašmēr viņš pievienojās Kunga Čitaiņas kustībai. So this is Garanga's a very good example of Shruti Dharma, you see. Un Kungs, Garanga ir ļoti lielisks piemērs šim te Shruti Dharma. Brahmachari. Brahmachari. He can hear 100 verses of Sanskrit poetry, and he can, he can perfectly pick one of those verses and find and, and analyze Bhavani Bhartu, the husband of the wife of Lord Shiva, is a literary fault called redundancy. Tātad viņš varēja noklausīties simts pantu sanskritā, tos visus atcerēties un vienā no pantiem atklāt trūkumu, kas bija atkārtošanās. So this is the value of Urdva Vrita. Un tā ir tā vērtība Urdva Vrita. I'm not discharging semana for so-called pleasure ka sākla netiek šķiesa tās augstajai baudai. So now I can ask those any questions. Tagad es jautāju, vai ir jautājumi? Draga Gurdev, skažiet, pārēlstā, možna li naučīt sa čemūta nepriņāv kā bija iniciāciju, to jūs, kā bija, nu, vot, ne pastupīv universitēt, možna li čemūta naučīt sa? Vai var kaut ko iemācīties, nesaņemot iniciāciju? Kā līdzīgi, vai var kaut ko iemācīties, uh, neiestājoties universitātē? The question is, can one learn something without enrolling in university in this case, or can one learn something without accepting, without uh, getting initiated? Can you learn something without being initiated? Yeah. Sure. Protams. You can learn what is necessary to get initiated. Jūs varat ta iemācīties kas ir nepieciešams lai saņemtu iniciāciju. Next question. Does that answer your question? Okay, next question. A što mam možem naučit sa tete igris Kešera Kašmiri? Ko mēs varam mācīties no šīs spēles ar Kešeru Kašmiru? What can we learn from this pastime with Keshava Kashmir? <laughs> That's an interesting question. What can we learn from this pastime of Keshava Kashmiri? Surrender to Lord Chaitanya. Isn't it? Um, That's what he did. Tas ir tas, ko viņš izdarīja. That's his example. Tas ir viņa he surrendered to Garanga. Viņš so we should also surrender to Gaurangam. Gaurangam, un mums arī sevi jāuztīts Gaurangam. That is the topmost lesson, surrender to Krishna. Un tā ir visaugstākā mācība, no uzticēt sevi Krishnam. Next question. Yes. My question is not related to the, today's uh, subject matter, but it disturbs my mind, so I'm asking it. Uh, every time when you visit Riga, uh, there are talks about that uh, 
the garlands made for you are nicer than the garlands made for Prabhupada. And uh, so how to deal with that? that Make nicer garlands for Prabhupada. Yeah, but, but your disciples uh, are not um, responsible for making garlands for Prabhupada. So well, what I suggest is my disciples then should also make garlands for Prabhupada when I'm here. And that way there'll be no problem. It's extra work, I know. It's double, double garlands. But actually it's true. It's pretty embarrassing for me to have a better garland than Prabhupada. That's a fact. So the only practical solution that I can see is my disciples should also make garlands for Prabhupada when I'm here. But what about, what about those who are um, responsible for making garlands for Prabhupada? It, uh, shouldn't it be a proper way to, uh, to learn from those who are more advanced how to make garlands and not to blame those who are more advanced? So learn from them and not to blame f for making nicer garlands. Um, yeah, that's true. They, if they're, they, they should learn to make better garlands for Prabhupada, that's a bad. So but wouldn't, if, if they work together... But the bottom line is, if I'm sitting here with a nicer garland than Prabhupada has, it's not good. That's the bottom line. And if, if they can't do it, then my disciples should do it. That's my understanding. If, my, if, if the local devotees can't make nice garlands like this for Prabhupada, then my disciples should do it. Just teach them by example, so that they can learn and come to a higher standard by seeing someone who's doing it. I mean, it is, it is awkward. I thought of it, I, today I was thinking, well, this garland is nicer than Prabhupada's garland. This is it's actually not proper. Because mm -hmm. Prabhupada should have, you know, I should have not something better than Prabhupada has. That's not proper. So if the devotees here are not able to, to make a nice garland like this, then my disciples should make a nice garland for Prabhupada every morning when I'm you. It's, I know it's double work, it's double expense for my disciples, but I'm asking so that I will not be committing offense to Prabhupada that my disciples can kindly do this. Yeah, times be par par, as you say, par par, ziedu vietnes izgatavošan, jo ka un makarāj šeit ka tad kad ja tie baktas kas kuriem uzticēt ziedu vietnes gatavošana prapopādam nevar pagatavot pietiekam labas ziedu vietnes tad šeit maniem skolniekiem mana satarsinās laikā ir jāgatavo abas ziedu vietnes anything else I agree with you, but it, but if they won't do it, or they can't do it, or they just don't, they're not able to do it. complaint is not valid. They should. They should. I agree with you, but I'm, the bottom line is, I don't want to have a better girl than Prabhupada. No, that's the bottom line. If they don't do it, or they won't do it, or they can't do it, they should do it, but if they don't, then I don't want to be in this position. It's better to give this garland to Prabhupada, and let me have the, the, the inferior garland they made. Yeah, it's better to do the other way around. If they, if my disciples can't, are not able to make two garlands, and there's a nicer, the nicest garland should be given to Prabhupada, and the less, the first class garland should be for Prabhupada, and the second class should be for me. When your man, school ne kādu jemas dēļ nevar uztaisīt divas ziedu vītnes, tad skaistākai ziedu vītnē ir jā, tā ir jādot Prabhupādam, tādam ir jābūt principam tad. That solves the problem right there. Un tas ir izsim tad problēma. Ideally, they should, there should be two nice garlands. Ideal, this is a nice garland, but it's just not, this, it's not on this standard. It's not bad what they're doing, but it's just my disciples are just going all out, and because their spiritual master is here, they're super enlightened, and they're making a nicer garland, what can I say? They are, they are making a nicer garland. Ko gan es varu teikt, tad mani, mani skolnieki, viņi ir iedvesmoti un viņi ir uztaisījuši the, the ļoti jauku. The reality is, when your spiritual master is physically present, there's an extra enlivenment you get from them. Realitāte ir tad, kad klātesoši ir garīgais skolotājs, tad viņš dod papildus iedvesmu. Even though Prabhupāda is fully here in the murti, it's hard for us to realize them. Lai gan Prabhupāda pilnībā, arī esot murtī, viņš ir pilnībā klāts šeit, mums ir ļoti grūti to apzināties. If Prabhupāda was physically here, I guarantee you, they'd be making much nicer garland than what they're making. Es jums garantēju, ja Prabhupāda fiziski būtu šeit, tad viņam būtu vēl skaistāk ziedu vīti nekā man. 
It's, that's the reality. That's how it works. That's why we take initiation from a living guru. Un tas tā darbojas, un tāpēc mēs pieņemam iniciāciju no dzīva guru. That physical presence helps us to get off the spaced out platform of sense gratification. Un šī dzīva guru klātesamība palīdz mums tikt nost no šīs te bezjēdzīgās platformas, kas ir maņu baudas. I don't follow. The morning garland is not made by your disciples. This was not made for my disciples? No. Rita, uh, oh. Rita, uh, Where did it come from? <laughs> the temple devotees made this. Oh. This is she... definitely an offense then. This is an operad. This is a this is a Prabhupada aparāda that I just really like. And that Prabhupada aparāda, ja to taisī temple bāktas un man ir skaistāk par ziedovītni tā ir aparāda. I apologize to the devotees any comments I made because the local devotees I I sincerely humbly beg forgiveness from the local devotees if they that they made this garland and uh, for Prabhupada and I'm, I'm very sorry that, about this confusion. I'll make sure tomorrow that I don't make this, uh, commit this offense tomorrow. It's not a prayer. That was made for you and that was made for Prabhupada. Oh, it was. How they made it? Uh, I'm confused now. I thought... <laughs> it's like those mapiots. <laughs> oh, the temple devotees made this one for me? Yes. Oh, okay. And they made that one for Oh, okay. So the temple devotees are expert garland makers. That's great. Ah, tāt temple de bhaktas ir prasmīgi ziedovītņu veidotāji. This is my offense then. You devotees didn't make any offense. I'm the offender here. Tagad es esmu tas, kurš veicis apaiņojumu. It's my offense. And I beg forgiveness from the assembled Vaishnavas. I beg forgiveness from Prabhupada. That, I, that both garlands, they made this garland for me. I should have humbly said, oh, this should be for Papa. This is my offense. That's it. Man's up for names. Man, why did take to? She is the other week because that is man. No, no, that is about Papa Padam. I'm the one who offered this to Papa this morning. I'm really in double trouble now. <laughs> I accepted this garland. I was the one who gave Papa that garland. I'm in double trouble. Good, but a double you, are, no, no. you have accepted it later. You offered it uh, one hour before you accepted this one. But this garland was also here. Ah, Both she... garlands were here at that time, and yeah. I offered Prabhupada that. See, the thing is, it was in, I'm a little innocent because it was in the basket, which is what we're <laughs> normal. This is a garland. The normal system here is Prabhupada's garland is in the basket. Yes. So I just, you know, so okay, I just followed the system here. Whatever garland is in the basket, you offer to Prabhupada. That's the system. But I should have not <clears throat> been in a, what's it called? I should not have been a basket case devotee. <laughs> I, mean, I was a basket case because I blindly took what was in the basket. You see? I should have thought, I should have looked, I should have been intelligent to not just be like rules and regulations man. I should look and see, well, this one in the basket is not as nice as the one they say for me, so they should be switched. That's what I should have done. You may switch it, but then there would be another complaint. Huh? I don't know if they would complain. <laughs> better to have that. Better to have people complain that you, you switch the garlands. Than, I'd rather have people find fault with me for switching the garlands than give Prabhupada the second class garland. Labāk lai vai no mani kais samainu samainu ziedovītnes nekā sanāk ka Prabhupadam nav tik skaista ziedovītne. So this is a very embarrassing lesson for me. I have to always look and see, you know, not blindly follow what's in the basket. <laughs> I have to see. Wait, the ones in the basket, the one that's set aside for me, which one is nicer? And if the the my is nicer, then I should switch them. Mana mana māci ir tagad tāda, tad kad ir es redzu šīs te divas ziedovītnes, man jāskatās, kura tad ir paredzēta man, kuru prapādam un jāizdara tā, lai prapāda saņem labāko. Ha? When you are visiting a temple, aren't you supposed to follow the authorities? Yes, but not blindly. <laughs> And you're supposed to follow the local system, but not blindly. <coughs> That's the point. I mean, I should have had... But that, you know what happened in Rishikesh Prabhu? They had, 
they had two garlands. They had one in the basket set for Prabhupada. And they had another one they'd made, which is over here on the bench for me. But the one in the basket was second class garland, and the one made for me was a first class garland. So I blindly just took the one in the basket and offered to Prabhupada. And then and now you can see I've gotten a much nicer garland than Prabhupada, which is an embarrassment for me. And it's like an, an operata against Prabhupada. But I, I shouldn't blindly just take what's in the basket. If the one out aside said for me is nicer than the one for Prabhupada, then I should switch them. You see? That was my realization now, this embarrassing pastime. <laughs> that I have not, here I'm sitting here with a nicer garland than Prabhupada. The temple devotees made both of the garlands. One for me and one for Prabhupada. They made a nicer one for me than they did for Prabhupada. So it's a good lesson. I had to be, I had to literally be careful what's, what's in the basket. Is it the same caliber as the one that's out of the basket? If not, I have to switch them. But all glory is to the garland makers. Thank you very much. So we're a little over time <coughs> because this issue came up and um, we thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki His grace, Sriman Sankarshan Das Adhikari Maharaj Ki Jai.